Wulugbu's wedding is coming up. She takes advantage of the last few moments with the women of her clan. Soon she will have to leave them. <laughs> For Nematula, the wedding is also imposed upon him. He does not know his bride to be. But he lives his last weeks being a single man with a light heart. Tomorrow, Wulugbu is going to get married. But Nematula's wedding date has not been determined yet. Wali must first sacrifice a sheep as a gift to the neighboring clan. His son's family-in-law will then decide on a day. Before the end of the ceremony, Roshan, the chief, heads away. Roshan is upset. He feels disowned by Wali and the entire community. Wali is honored by the marriage of his children. Roshan, on the other hand, is jealous. Unlike his older brother, he feels he has not earned the tribe's respect. He has been the leader for two years, and yet still hasn't arranged the clan's exile. A messenger brings the cooked meat to the neighboring clan. Wulugbu anxiously waits for the next day, wondering what her future husband might look like. The groom's entire family has come from the neighboring campsite, four hours away by horse. They are welcomed with flour, a precious staple, and a symbol of prosperity.
This party is a truce for the rival brothers. Roshan greets the guests and goes back to becoming the chief. Yeah! Wally supervises what's happening in the kitchen. He must make sure that everyone is well served. As elsewhere in the world on a wedding day, the meal is copious. Four sheep were slaughtered to feed the hundred guests. Some yurts are reserved for men, others for women. Nearby, Wulugbu is getting ready. Wulugbu will soon leave the family's yurt, a demanding separation for this girl, barely out of childhood. Wulugbu is waiting for her turn to appear in the wedding parade. The groom arrives with his two best men. They are welcomed by the women of the clan. <laughs> On the other side of the river, the men of both clans are playing a game of buskashi, an equestrian joust for daredevils. The goal is to snatch a headless goat. This is a friendly game where winners get small prizes like cigarettes. Roshan the chief shines at this game. The blows do not put him off. The exact origins of the game are unknown, but some say that they date back to Genghis Khan's Mongol hordes who would loot villages catching women and livestock while at full gallop. To the campsite, Wali's clan offers new clothes to the groom. He dresses up in front of everyone. Hidden under the red fabric, the mother-in-law passes a white veil on the bride to show that she approves the alliance with her son. Next comes the nikah, the ceremony. Ulugbu is placed behind the cloth that conceals her from the men. <laughs> the only mullah of the area celebrates the ritual. The sacrament is a mix of Islam and ancestral traditions. 
خدای تعالی تبارک و تعالی اون سکیز می آلاندی درجه با درجه تربیت کلی بجرات کن یه ریسو آسمان دی بیستون تخت تان شون دای اولو قدرتی با the groom will not be allowed into the yurt until the wedding is official. By sharing water and bread, the couple exchange their consent. Then they are left alone. Finally, Wulugbu discovers the face of her husband. They can get to know each other. They will spend the next three days in the nuptial yurt. Wulugbu will follow her man to her new family.